Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Tech Talk. I'm Julia Beauchamp. I am here with Computer World Executive Editor Ken Mingus, as well as Keith Shaw. He's the Senior Editor at Robotics Business Review. Keith is back to talk robots. We're going to talk cobots, as well as wearable robots, and what to expect in 2020, and some thoughts from CES. So stick around. All right, Keith, thank you so much for coming back in. Hey, really thanks for having me. Good to see you, Keith. Yeah, Happy New thanks, Year. Thanks for having me back. Thanks. I love talking robots. And you saw a lot of really cool stuff going on at CES, which I would love to talk about. And so the last time that you were here, we kind of talked about, you know, don't freak out. Robots aren't coming for your jobs. Right. And what I feel like has maybe come to light even more since then is that robots aren't coming for your jobs. Robots may even help you in your jobs. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the big message that we're that a lot of the robot industry companies are are promoting is the idea of uh, having robots augment humans or help yeah. ro- or help humans or replace those dull tasks but still have a human in the loop type of things. Uh, w- I heard one company talk about you've heard of Industry 4.0 where mm-hmm. they talk about yeah. the digitization of, of of industrial type things. Some people are now saying that Industry 5.0 is going to be kind of that collaboration and humans in technology working together. So it's definitely a trend that's that's happening. I think if you see anybody that that does still talk about the whole humans and jobs and things like that, they've probably got an agenda behind that <laughs> that that thought. But that's just kind of a personal opinion. What I'm I'm curious, what's the time frame in terms of like, it, let's say it's you know it's the industry 5.0 when yeah. the robots are five years, ten years. Oh, it could be anywhere between twenty now years and, and now and ten years. I mean, okay. There's a lot of people that still say that Industry 4.0 hasn't really happened yet. I mean, mm-hmm. it depends on your definition of, of what, what that term should be. Okay. And what do you think Industry 5.0 looks like? Like, what is going to be – how will we even know when it reaches its final form? Oh, boy. Uh, I would say, yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily think that you need to kind of define that in terms of when it happens. It'll probably be slow and gradual, it, it, you know, as companies, especially in manufacturing and the supply chain, as they start to deploy robots into their factories and, and warehouses, then you'll start to see it. And then once okay. they're there and then the, the, the workers get used to it, then they'll start um, adding applications or adding features that make them more collaborative. I was I, Collaborative is the word I yeah. wanted to ask about because we were talking about before beforehand about this idea of co-robots or co-robotics, which is just something that, that has sort of bubbled up out of the ether in the last, I don't know, six months or a yeah, year. Yeah, we call them cobots. Cobots. Yeah. All right. So so what what is collaborative robotics? I mean, is that is that that is a thing, right? Yeah. So when, initially when when these fir- these the these uh, robots st- first started coming out, and, and I'm talking about robots like uh, the Universal Robots, uh, the UR Mott series, mm-hmm. they're usually smaller. Now, the industry actually calls them light industrial. Okay. So the big ones that are at the car factories, the ones I was just going to say, this sounds ABB, like auto manufacturing. Yeah, the right? auto manufacturers, they've got giant robots and they they cage them all off because you can't go in there because they'll kill you because they don't have any sensors on them. Yeah. So what Universal and some other companies not do, intentionally, not intentionally, just, they, no. they yes. accidentally. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just checking, not just making yeah. sure. <laughs> Sorry. Because there's no intelligence on these robots. They yeah. basically have been programmed move from here to here, move you know, and then just do it's it. It's a really repetitive quickly. task. It's repetitive task. It's very quick. Yeah. What 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 the cobot makers did was they started putting sensors on the on the arms, and so they're smaller robots, and then they can detect when you're here. Yeah. So instead of me going like, if you're not there, and I go like this and cut, and cut my head you know, off. Well, no, no. If you're not there, okay. Yeah, but then yeah. once you're there, then then it'll it stop. Okay. And so so they move slower, and so. The industrial robot makers will call them light industrial, or they'll call them power and force limiting, whereas the other ones are calling the cobots because the idea is that you're going to have a human kind of in the loop, and you know the human's going to do one task and the cobot's going to do the other task, and the idea is that they're going to work together on a on a on a task. Is it sort of the sort of the kind of thing where you'd be you know going back and forth? So human does tasks, some, robot yeah, does tasks. Yeah, there human, are some companies robot. that are trying to integrate that even more, and so that like there's a company in in Waltham called Vo Robot. Robotics, and they have they're putting sensors on large industrial robots so that the so and 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 one of the use cases that they have is someone that's kind of uh, lift uh, uh, adding a refrigerator door to a refrigerator mm-hmm. and so what the the industrial robot arm will pick up the the door and hold it and they'll allow the human to come in and then do the screws into the into the door and then the robot will then move 
the to door the next somewhere one, to yeah. the next one type type of thing. And that's the collaboration that they're they're looking for. Okay. Oh, Interesting. That's okay. Cool. So that's the actually yeah. co op collaborative robots. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's just a robot stepping in to do a task that maybe a human couldn't do in the first place, and it kind of makes everything easier. I mean, I definitely can't hold a heavy refrigerator door for a while. I haven't tried lately. <laughs> right. And so <laughs> it, it, even in the automotive space, you know, that there are. Uh, workers that just do this all day, like they 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 lift their arms yeah. and they're under the car, and mm-hmm. they're just you know screwing in something or or I, I don't know how to make a car, so <laughs> yeah, they're nice. doing something underneath the car, yes. and they usually have a drill with them or yeah. some sort of tool. tool. But then by the end of the day, if you had to do this, if you had to stand like this for eight your hours, like by the end of your day, your yeah. shoulders and your back, and and so there's a lot of injuries that occur with a lot of these workers, and so there are companies that are trying to 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 either have a robot sort of do something to support that, or they're creating kind of wearable systems that will help reduce the strain on, on workers' backs. Yeah, wearable. I was going to say, that's really cool. It seems yeah. like, this seems like the most interesting thing because it seems like it makes you look like a robot. It all feels very futuristic. But yeah, it's so, happening now. So wearable robots. So, Talk. so wearable robotics is now kind of a term that's being thrown around uh, for uh, what used to be called exoskeletons, and they're still called exoskeletons. And, and even within that space, there are powered exoskeletons or passive exoskeletons. Though that whole industry started way back in the day to support soldiers uh, who'd been injured in 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 either battle or somehow injured, and may, you know maybe you you lost the ability to walk, and right. so a lot of these systems were created to help people walk again. Uh, mm-hmm. Some amazing stuff. So it's always it always started out in the in the military side and then the the healthcare therapeutic side. So for example, sure. people that have strokes and lose the ability to sort of remember how to walk, uh, we're seeing exoskeletons that you know they'll they'll get into one of these systems and it actually helps them learn how to walk more than if you had three physical therapists all holding you. And in fact, that benefits the therapists as well because now they don't you know you only need one physical therapist to sort of have someone. And learn, relearn how to walk, and then those other two therapists can go help other patients. And so that's another area where we're seeing kind of the robots benefit. So what a lot of these companies did in the exoskeleton space is now they're moving more towards industrial worker protection, almost more preventing injuries rather than just you know kind of helping them after an injury. Uh, so we've seen vests that people can wear that support the lower back. Uh, some have power, some have some don't, but some you know some. We'll do the arm stuff so that if you're moving your arm, it's you don't have to extend as much energy. Right. You know, the robot is it's not doing all of the work, but it's doing less. It's doing more of it. Uh, and so the company named Sarcos made a big splash at CES this year, sure. where they showed their Guardian XO, which has been in development for like five or six years. Uh, and they announced a partnership with Delta Airlines, and Delta is going to take you know a, a few of these robot exoskeleton units. And these things look exactly like you might think from the movie Aliens with Sigourney with, Weaver. With Sigourney She's Weaver, going she gets the into alien. the thing, and then she you know Clamps she uses it and, to fight the alien. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what Delta's going to be doing? Delta's not going <laughs> to be fighting, fighting aliens. aliens. Okay, good. Delta's going to use this in places where they're, they're they've got workers that are doing a lot of lifting and and, and maintenance. Um, and they were they showed a, a, a few examples at the show. They had a, a, a giant giant airline tire like an airplane tire yeah. and those things yeah. these things are as big as me and so um lifting up one of those usually probably takes two or three people and you're again you're straining a lot of the back but with one of these sit you know you walk into one of these suits and you have the robot here and you have the robots along the legs and you walk around and then you can just basically pick it up and they had this woman that uh, you know, was doing a demonstration. She was saying that she l- learned how to use it on Friday, and on Tuesday she was giving the demonstration. I was just going to ask about yeah. that yeah. because this is the sort of thing that I think would really require a lot of training. I mean, m- or maybe not. Maybe you can just sort of put this exoskeleton on. Yeah, that's one of the selling. Yeah, it. that's one of the selling points of the system is that you know they're claiming that it's easy for workers to use. Because if, again, if if, if something's going to take you three weeks or four weeks to learn, your workers aren't going to do that. They're not going to. They'll be just like I'll take the chance and lift it on my own. Another an interesting part about this suit is that the the you know when you when you've got the the robot arms and the hands, yeah. you can detach them. You can sort of like push a button and then use your own hands. So, when, so they sort of fold out so, of the way. So that example that you know she used the 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 robot to lift this heavy piece off, but once she put that down, other smaller pieces that she could lift that were only like two or three pounds, she could then just kind of use her own arms. So she detaches herself. 
from those arms oh. parts and then lifts the So you can the use the robot off. for the heavy pieces that you can't move yep. but when you need something that's more granular control yeah. or something with, you know, with like tools or whatever. Right, especially with the hands. fingers because the finger, the, the grippers that are on these things are probably two finger or three finger grippers and, you know, the hands are still the best part of, how, of a human. How, the, <laughs> maybe, the best robot. Well, maybe, maybe a dumb question, but I mean, all right, so you put on the exoskeleton. How does the robot know what movements you're doing does it, are there sensors that are built into like the arms or the the shoulder you know how does it mimic human human i think mo- it movement? i think it detects where the the you know where there's a force the human starts the the movement and then i think the robot figures out which way you're going and then helps with the force <laughs> I, that's I just that's about a, as much a, as like a can, vision I, of I one of these things you. going nuts <laughs> no 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 i think once you step into it it's not going to like take over it's you know you you know once you start moving then it, it goes oh you're and moving if you stop moving it'll and then if stop. you stop it'll stop right and okay. there's 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 a i think there's a an interface that you can tell it to like stop too and there's an emergency stop if if a kill button if it suddenly them. gets sentience which i'm joking it's, it's not, not gonna, gonna happen. Get, no 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 but i mean i could see you know i mean all right so technology does occasionally go awry and yeah. you're in an exoskeleton holding a big heavy wheel and something gets glitchy and you know the wheel goes flying or the wheel falls on your foot or something yeah i i think that they've probably thought about all that stuff <laughs> yeah. okay it's like, and they're not going to i would assume them. so yeah. i yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like when you like grab your sibling's arm and you're like, why are you hitting yourself? Like that, <laughs> except with a robot. You don't want that to happen, I'm sure. Um, it seems like, how, when is this going to actually roll out though? I mean, how soon is Delta, is Delta going to be the first airline to implement this? They're they're in like the pilot program okay. like, probably right now. I mean, they're probably going to get it for 30 to 60 days. So the way that, that Sarcos works is that they have this thing called the advisory group or the the exoskeleton it's called x tag i can't remember what the t stands for but um companies sign up with them and then they they suggest an application where they were thinking about using an exoskeleton and then the company says okay well let's try it for 30 days and 60 days and then give us feedback we'll give you you know we'll let you borrow the it's basically letting them borrow the robot for a while so it's not like delta mm-hmm. bought this and then later on, gotcha. you know, and then, you know, throughout the rest of the year, the company is going to produce more and more of these things um, and then deploy them to other industries. That's really cool. I'm you like, know, Delta might just come back and go, you know what, it's, you know, it was too hard or, or you know, we didn't get the benefit we were looking for. So, you know, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, they might think of other things that they can do with, with the, these robots. Yeah, definitely. I'm heading to the airport tomorrow. I'll let you know if I see any. If you see any robots tarmac. out there lifting you're, wheels, you're not going to. You're not going s- <laughs> to. not going to be any near the plane. I, I think you're going to see passengers. this in maintenance and maybe luggage because there, there was yeah, a luggage, I was luggage say example. With luggage. Yeah, maybe if you are on the tarmac and you're looking out as they're yeah. unloading, maybe they'll put them out there and you'll see this, you know, person. I've you know. got a window seat. I'll let you know. Please do. I mean, Definitely no one wants to be lifting my luggage, I'm sure, because well, I always am at 49.9. <laughs> well, you got to be right at the edge. I wanted to ask, you know, one of the things uh, you, you, you've written about from CES is that in the old days, sort of robotics at CES meant things like Roomba. Yeah. And obviously, there's been this real shift toward industrial type robots, as you're talking about. One of the one of the companies that uh, uh, you'd reference was Omron mm-hmm. and a, a table tennis instructor. Yeah, but it's not so much about the table tennis. It's yeah, it's, it goes it's, beyond so that. So they use an industrial robot that's kind of a vertical one and usually these robots are using they're doing like picking and placing type things or picking up a, an object and putting it over here yeah. for an assembly line type type of application but what Amram w- wanted to do and they've done this for about four years is they developed an application where it, it this robot holds a ping pong paddle and actually can can hit the ball back to to a human opponent and they tell me that they're like it's not about the ping pong robot being better than the human. They're not trying to prove that a, a robot can play ping pong better than a, than a human. Actually, it's table tennis because I think ping pong is, yeah. is one of those trademarked words. Okay, so, table tennis. Uh, anyway, uh, so they they they're trying to say that they're using it as a as a tutor or a trainer. So if you want to learn how to be better at ping pong, you know the 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 robot can adjust its skills to 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 do more long rallies with you. Because again, the, the idea of training when you're playing ping pong is to you don't want to just you know play ping pong, ball, ball boom, and I miss, and then I got to go pick up the ball. Right. It's more about having a sustained rally, and it's the same thing with regular tennis too. When you're training, you want to have long rallies so that you're you're, you're practicing your swing and things like that. Mm-hmm. So what they've also done is they've added some uh, artificial intelligence with a camera that can can detect the face of the player, and they have this emotional intelligence. Uh, 
sensor that can tell whether you're happy, sad, frustrated. They've got <laughs> and then a, it does what? Makes it so, worse? Or, well, or if you're if adjust? you're like if you're getting if you're ticked off because you're losing to this robot, the robot will go, okay, maybe I won't play as hard. I'm going to back off a little bit and you know allow you to that, to sustain that rally. And so they're using that as a, as an example to show attendees. Yeah, we can also use this in at a factory setting, and we can tell whether the workers who we are trying to get to collaborate more, we can now sense the feelings of these of these workers to say whether they're stressed out or if they're tired or you know, and so and then ad- adjust based on those settings. Yeah, it's, it's just, I was just going to ask you about you know because it seems like with at least the early generation of industrial robots, they're sort of like dumb robots. Mm-hmm. They, they you know again doing repetitive movements, maybe augmenting what humans are doing. But are we seeing a trend, or do we expect? there to be a trend where you're going to see more AI built into the robot where there's some intelligence built in. Yeah, yeah, so that you know there there are movements in, in terms of making the robots intelligent in terms of how they learn how to do tasks. So before you would have this thing called dependent and you would have a programmer basically telling it, you know, move from here to here and then do this and it's very, you know, tedious and it mm-hmm. takes a lot of time. Now we're seeing robots where you know more on the cobot space where it's called gesture-based programming. So you basically move the robot itself and you tell it, you know, you move it, you pick it up and then you place it on your own. And then the robot mimics that? mimics that, and then or and then they've got they're putting cameras on it so that it can see where it is. Because a lot of the robots are very precise; they will only move to a point. And if the cup, is, you know, if you're picking up a cup here, the robot's never going to pick it up unless it can see it and then adjust itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's okay. a lot of machine learning that's going on where you're trying to train robots through machine learning algorithms so that. Again, it can do the one task, but then maybe do a second task and learn a third task. And that's that's kind of the exciting stuff going on in terms of, of AI. But then they're also putting more sensors on it so that it can see and adjust and, you know, not kill you. I want, you know, again, and I wonder, too, how are these things networked or connected? I mean, are there, are there, is there a hardwired cable somewhere that goes into the robot? Is it, uh, you know, a Wi-Fi, it depends, it depends on, network? Yeah, it depends on the system. Uh, most of the processing right now is happening on the robot itself, so okay. there's a computer inside the okay. robot. Uh, but, you know, there are, are movements more towards uh, AI processing in the cloud and edge, pro- you know, so that we, we do cover a lot about edge AI and, you know, especially in the autonomous vehicle space, the computers that need to be in these cars are so big and bulky that it's not going to be beneficial. Okay. So, the, so that's why with 5G and some of this edge networking, you're seeing the movement towards all of the processing and decision making happening kind of in the cloud and, and less on the car. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, right. It's something that can be done locally rather than like, right. But a lot of a lot of factories right and now, industrial locations are really wary about connecting a lot of their equipment to the cloud because these are big machines and they don't want they've got security concerns and you don't want to start yeah, connecting all this stuff. Uh, some of the like the mobile robots in the warehouse they all do connect via Wi-Fi. So mm-hmm. a lot of those companies require that there's a Wi-Fi connection. Okay. Because a lot of the data okay. that gets that gets that gets picked up from these robots gets sent and processed in the cloud. Yeah, well, that I mean, because as these things advance, obviously you have to deal with things like AI, ML. You have to deal with the networking. You know, there's a, there has to be a sort of an ecosystem mm-hmm. building around them. So I just want to back up to like thirty thousand foot view real quick about the robotics industry in general and and recent growth. I mean, do you have any numbers or stats on? You know the robotics industry sort of broadly and how it's been growing over the last few years and how it's expected to grow in the next. Five, ten. I can't give you kind of any numbers that I have off the top of my head because okay. I see so many market reports on a regular right, basis. Right. But most of the reports I see, they all do the curve. Mm-hmm. They all say that you know we're at the cusp and, and it's it is going to continue to grow and and advance. Uh, depends on the market. It depends on the verticals that are being looked at. I mean, manufacturing, it's already there. Yeah. Electronics and and component assembly, it's a lot. It's already there. Supply chain. I mean, we just got out of the holiday season. You know, robots probably most of the packages that you bought, a robot probably helped deliver that from a warehouse or a distribution center to the person packing the box. Whether mm-hmm. it was they moved, whether it was they moved the whole shelf, which is what Amazon does, yep. or whether it was a, a, a company like Locus where the uh, a robot goes to the warehouse and then there's a picker and the picker puts it into the into the into the robot and the robot delivers it to the to the packing station. So there, you know, there's there's growth everywhere. We're seeing a lot more growth in agriculture and construction, healthcare with the surgical robots. That's always that's always going to be there. We're going to see more robots in healthcare scenarios that aren't surgical. So lab automation, we're going to see a lot of uh, of robots, uh, materials handling, delivering linens and. 
TV trays oh, sure. or those or are the ones that trays. go down the hall and, yeah. and, and you can drops off food yep. or drops off yep. or picks up things. Yep. And in okay. fact, and so I just got back from the retail show, the National Retail Federation show, and we're seeing uh, a lot of robots that are going to be in grocery stores. You're probably going to see them. You're, you're going to see more robots in grocery stores probably. Stocking at some point. shelves? No. No, 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 no. And so that's the big misconception. Because <laughs> I'm so, all about misconception. So, for example, this week, uh, uh, Walmart announced that they're going to be deploying uh, 1,000 robots across the country. Now, they've done about 300 robots so far. Okay. And it was a pilot program. It was, it was through a company called Bossa Nova Robotics. And they announced this week that they're expanding that program, so they're going up to 1,000. And so, you know, the, the mainstream media and some of the general media sites were like, oh, my God, the robots are coming. They're going to take all the, the Walmart associate jobs. It's like, no. They're not. They're taking away the horrible task of counting in terms of okay. and out of stocks. Like the worst thing as a customer when you go to a store is what? You go there and you the go shelf there empty. and the shelf is empty and they don't have the product. That is a big, big problem for retailers. It's a trillion dollar problem. Like of lost business. There there are people that will will abandon a store completely if they don't have, you know, something. They'll be like, Well, I'm never gonna buy here again. You know, you know, you said you had it and you didn't. Yeah. And so that's a big problem that that automation is now taking care of where this robot can go down an aisle, scan it, sees that something's empty, and alert a store associate or someone that says, Hey, we're out of we're out of cocoa puffs. Yeah. Just to use that example. <laughs> um, and then I'm someone, never shopping here and again. So, you know, okay. Right, and so, and so when that alert happens, then an associate can go and restock the cocoa puffs. I just what? like, <laughs> and Keith, you know, so that so that when I, when Keith comes in, you his know, cocoa puffs are my waiting cocoa for puffs him. are there instead of out of stock. Would the robot not at some point alert the you know the store that the cocoa cocoa puffs are out, and then a <laughs> robot would come back and stock the cocoa puffs rather than having somebody in, you know in theory in theory the that's something, and that, that's what we're calling mobile manipulation, where you're combining a, an autonomous mobile robot with with a cocoa robot arm but right now the oh. research is like the gripping ability for a robot to go in take a box one doesn't and want to crush one's shell. cocoa puffs yeah it's just not there yet it's okay. it, it might get there at some point but again it's not it, it's it's more about giving the the tasks of the of the associates more time to talk with with customers and you know Sure. And and so a lot of these robots, in addition to finding out of stocks, they're also making sure the prices are matched, and they're making sure that um, the what, what's called a planogram, which is like a display, and you, you want to make sure that the, you know from if you're Anheuser Busch and you have a beer display for the Super Bowl, yeah. you want to make sure that it's stocked correctly the way you want it to be stocked. And so sure. what a lot of these these people that set this stuff up is they'll take a picture of it to prove that it's right, but. During the course of a day, you know, People a customer pick things up, they take things, things up, away. take things away, yeah. put put cocoa puffs onto the beer display, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. So these robots will come around and do that and say, "Oh, it's not matching the planogram. Hey, fix this." Okay. So that's that's a lot of the stuff, and and a lot of these are handled by robots, but we're also seeing some some of this handled by drones, indoor little drones that can do the thing, and we're seeing like little shelf cameras that that people are putting on. But a lot of it depends on the the size of the store and the and you know what you're looking for and where what part of the market are the drones and the cameras part of the of the robot rollout that Walmart is doing is or is there is no, the, they're doing the Walmart thing is just the, the is specifically a vertical robot on wheels that has scanners on it and they go up and down the aisle and scans usually just the grocery aisle and do they do that when people are shopping or like yeah. after hours oh, oh so you might yeah, see yeah they one. can do it a lot of the times they do it after hours but but they are doing it during the day and okay. so What's interesting is the robot company, the guys at the robot company tells me, like, they're learning a lot about human-robot interaction. Uh-huh. And I was going to say, do they, put smile, do they put smiles on the no, robot or no, some no, colorful, no, cheerful colors No, no. in fact, something? they design these robots to not look, to look like a happy robot. They, they, they basically make it robot. look like, no. They don't <laughs> An angry do, robot. No, there's, there's, no, there's no face on it. There's no screens. It's just a, a vertical tower on wheels. It looks wheels. industrial. It looks industrial. It's meant to be a tool for, yeah. the, for, the, for, the, uh, for Walmart rather than something that you would interact with. Now, I have seen examples of some robots that they want to have that interaction, mm -hmm. and so that they are putting... So they something are putting more anthropomorphic? It looks a little no, more it's still a tower, but, they're, but they've got like a, a, a display on it so that you can... Almost like a tablet that you could then touch and interact and, and with that. Um, but just to, to go back to some of the human-robot interaction, like yeah. they tell me some stories off the record, uh, although I'm going to say them here, uh, of where like... You know how people people are the worst sometimes. Yeah. And and you know whenever a technology comes around they'll try to do you know to make fun of it. So, you know, they'll they'll stand there to just block 
block the robot to see, the to robot see what it will does. Stop. Yeah, yeah, to see if it'll stop and then see how long it well, takes that's to turn out around. of the gene pool sometimes. Yeah. You know, and and then some, you know, one one guy told me that, you know, a customer mooned one of the robots. <laughs> So, oh, but, people. Right. but their yeah. cameras on the robot, yeah, they so they yeah. probably have pictures of these of these customers that okay. are doing these stupid things. Maybe his cocoa puffs are not there. <laughs> He's mad because of the cocoa. Well, oh, one other thing is like as retailers are moving towards this, you know, buy online, pick up in store. Yep. It's even more important for these stores to have that that item in stock. Sure. Because again, the last thing you do is if you know you're online, you're like, oh, I'm going to go pick it up, and then it's they come there. back and go, oh, we couldn't find it. Is anybody besides Walmart? Doing this kind of testing, a lot of groceries, a lot of grocery, grocery stores, stores, and there are a lot okay. of regional chains. Uh, Kroger is doing a lot of this. There's a chain called Giant. Uh, okay. There's some in the Midwest that are doing. Stop and Shop has robots here in New England. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, the robots are are doing spill detection. Okay. So they're they're looking around. Clean up an aisle four. Yeah. So they're they're just going around making sure that you know there's no water on the floor, so that you know because again, if a customer comes in and slips and and falls, right. they're liable. So what Stop and Shop had was they had employees walking around like once an hour looking to see if there were spills, and so now the robot is doing that, and the company that makes the robot is now adding inventory scanning capabilities, so that it'll have a dual purpose. Got gotcha. It. Wow. Cool. There's a lot, a lot going, going on. on yeah. huh? Yes, and if we're lucky, we'll see some. Soon, either, on our own. Either at the airport or at the or grocery at, store. Yeah. yeah. Any other trends or things we should be thinking about as we move into oh, 2020 boy. and the next few years? Uh, you're just going to, you know, we might see some consolidation of some robot companies. There are a lot of, of startups in the space. And I think that as they prove that they're successful, you're going to see larger companies take notice. For example, last the big one last year was Shopify buying uh, Six River Systems. And so mm. Six River Systems had a mobile robot that was doing inventory. Not inventory. They were they were going and doing pickup uh, with warehouse stock shelves. And yeah. so Shopify bought them, similar to the way that Amazon bought Kiva back in 2012. And so I think that we're going to still probably see some more big announcements in that space. Okay. It does sound like in terms of robotics yeah. in general, it's still sort of in the background. Still early. It's still very oh, still early, early industry, yeah. um, but it's exciting to cover because yeah. there's always something new and there's always something kind of cool. So next time you come by, can you bring an exoskeleton? <laughs> you know, yeah. these things are expensive. Call yeah, your people. Yeah. Not. All right. Well, maybe. I, I might they have don't a, loan those out like you get one with we, like an iPhone. We did a we did a conference session at CES, and one of the one of my speakers was from Exobionics, and so they're doing more of the therapeutic robots. But he actually did most of his presentation. With the, with the exoskeleton with, with the wearable one on, you know, that it was wearing. And then when he sat down for the Q&A, he took it off. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bummer. I hate when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions you can no, think of? No, I think that's it. Thanks so much for All right. Hey, Keith. no problem. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks for being here, Keith. Uh, you Great. want to do the outro or show Sure. Okay. I'll, t- I'll take it. it. I'll take it. it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Tech Talk. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, as well as check out Robotics Business Review. We'll link that in the description. Thank you so much for watching again, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.